Hey everybody. My name is Candace and I live in Central North Carolina with my family. We actually live on some acreage that we moved to in 2020. And we came from a tiny quarter acre lot um, in the city and we decided that moving was a good idea. So um, we moved out with um, very little experience with gardening. I had planted a square foot garden before and I didn't even really get to tend that because we moved away after I planted it. Um, but we jumped right in when we got here. So I thought since gardening season was upon us now that it would be a good idea to just give you a little taste of what our journey looked like. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what year one of our garden looked like in 2021. Um, how we figured out what to plant, where we got our seeds, how we planted our seeds, and how we built our garden. I'll share a little bit about what we harvested, what we did with our harvest. Um, we are by no means experts, and I'm learning every day as I go. So I thought I would just take a minute, like I said, to share with you. So I hope you learned something in this video. I hope that if you have any type of um, stirring in you to grow food that this will just give you the push that you need to do that. So thank you for being here and let's get started. So one of the first things you probably want to do is figure out what zone you live in. We live in zone 7b and really all that means is when is your first frost date for the year and when is your last frost date for the year. So we're fortunate in North Carolina to have a really long growing season. Um, but you can just type in your zip code in an internet search bar to figure out what zone you're in. And from there, you can find some planting guides and figure out when you should plant what and how long it's going to take things to harvest or to come to harvest. Um, but that's definitely a good place to start. As for figuring out what you want to plant, what do you eat? Um, just think about what your family eats and the things that you buy at the grocery store and start there. So we actually used our sunroom as kind of a makeshift greenhouse. And you can see that this space is so lovely. When we came out and looked at this house, I had a vision immediately for trying to use that for a greenhouse. Um, it's worked really well for us. We got some shelving units. Um, I bought some supplies from a company called Park Seed. Um, can't even really remember how I found that, to be honest, but um, they had a product called Biodome, which I loved, you guys. It was so wonderful for my first year. Uh, and I used it my second year too, but um, they're little cocoa core plugs that you plant the seed down into, and then you put a dome over it, so it makes um, just a miniature greenhouse and the seeds germinated really fast. So I was really blown away at how well that worked. Um, I bought some other supplies. I got some Jiffy greenhouse, like started herb garden in your windowsill type things. And they worked okay. Um, they certainly got the job done. Also bought these peat cups, which I do not recommend these. Um, I'm really thinking about doing a whole video about this product and just why I did not love it. But, um, Plant in anything you have. I have used red solo cups before, as you will actually see in this video that I used in my first year of gardening. So use what you have, um, start where you are, and do what you can. Now, when you go to buy seeds, um, you are better off planting any seed, be it from the dollar store or from Lowe's or from a seed company like the one I bought from, that is better than not doing anything at all, okay? So if that's what you have access to, then do that. Um, I was really interested in organic heirloom seeds um, and I went to seedsaver.org and they have a lot of really wonderful heirloom seeds. Heirloom just means that that seed came from a plant and was saved. So someone grew a plant a hundred years ago and saved the seed and then planted it again the next season and then planted it again the next season. So it just means that it, it wasn't, um, 
a new seed. It was, it was from generations before. Um, so seed savers was wonderful. I think I spent about $140 for my first seed order. And you can see here, I got a lot of stuff y'all. And, um, I decided to store my seeds in baseball card sleeves. I love organization and keeping things neat. It just helps me manage my life. And, um, so I found baseball card sleeves and got some dividers and put them in a binder and sectioned them off by herbs, flowers, fruit, um, etc. And it worked really well for me. So I'm fortunate to have some friends that have gone before me in this life of homesteading. And um, I've kind of been dubbed a professional question asker <laughs> to some of them because I just bombarded them with questions about um, all the things and I would encourage you to do the same thing including me ask anything you want but get to know um, farmers in your area find a local farmers market and ask them questions too um, it's really am amazing how willing people are to share what they've learned along the way because the truth is somebody taught them too um, so I would have had I not asked any questions got a tiller and tilled up our land because that's what I saw my papa do my whole life. I grew up um, watching my great grandparents garden. It wasn't a huge garden, but they grew things that my great grandmother would can and he tilled. So I thought that's what you did. And I later learned that it's actually um, can be better. I'm not going to tell you what you should do, but it can be better and has been found to produce less weeds if you actually don't till the soil. I know, right? mind blown i was but um tilling the soil is going to disturb the weed seed that is beneath the soil and it's also going to release nitrogen from the soil that you want to stay in there so that you can create the perfect environment for your food to grow okay so we built our garden beds from the ground up we decided what area of land we were going to use and it just so happens that the person who lived here before us, um, there was a family that lived here for 55 years. They gardened, I think, for 30 of those years that they were here. And one of the areas that they gardened um, is where I chose to put my garden. Couple reasons for that. Um, it was one of the only flat areas that we have that gets full sun. Um, so it made sense. And I knew that they had previously gardened there. So I had high hopes that that soil was going to be really cultivated and rich and nice to work with. Um, I did buy a, a soil testing kit, honestly, because I felt like I was curious to know. Um, but I didn't know anything about soil and I still really don't. I have a lot to learn as far as the nerdiness of soil microbiome, but I wanted to check the pH to see if the soil was alkaline or acidic. And as you can see here, it appeared to be fine. So we didn't do anything to amend it up front, but we mowed the area that we decided we were going to garden in. We mowed it down to the mantle of the earth, as my husband would say, as low as we could. I had saved lots and lots of cardboard boxes. Um, we had recently moved, so um, actually that's not true. We gave all those boxes away. I found somebody on Facebook who had a lot of boxes and went and got those for free. People are always looking to get rid of cardboard. So I went and found um, some boxes, ripped all the tape off, and you don't wanna use any cardboard that's gonna have a lot of ink. You don't want any waxy um, film on the outside of the cardboard, and you want it to be brown. You really don't want colored cardboard if you can help it. Um, take off all the tape and the labels, which yes, that was a bit of a process, but it wasn't that bad. Um, and then you laid the boxes out flat onto the ground. You wet them with the hose, and then the fun begins. I uh, contacted a local company called The Mulch Yard and had them deliver a topsoil compost blend um, and also some mulch. And we literally built our raised rows for our garden right on top of the, comp of the uh, cardboard. Um, and I think, I had watched a video on how someone did this, but I, I think it was about, it tapered up so it was, um, thinner toward the end of the row and then it sort of mounded up like a hill in the center of the row so I think eight to ten inches was the tallest point of the row and I did mulch in the walk paths 
So it took about three months for that cardboard to disintegrate. And I was real curious. So I was checking all the time through the season to see, but it eventually broke down and we just had really rich soil there in the ground. Um, and that was plenty of time for the roots to, to grow through. It didn't impede their growing or anything like that. Now, before we planted, we did harden off our plants. So this just means we took things from the sunroom and put them outside in natural light for a couple days, uh, some longer, but we did that before we put them out into the soil. You guessed it, lettuce was one of the first things to plant and it was one of the first things that we harvested. This might have been one of the most exciting days of my life when we got our first basket of lettuce. Now you might be wondering, how did we know what to plant where? It's a great question. And I found a, um, an app actually called Grow Veg, and I got a free trial. And I used it to design the layout of my garden. Um, it was fun to play around with and just get an idea for what things were going to look like. And we stuck to this for the most part, um, but it was a lot of fun. And I think the trial was 30 days for free. I did not renew or subscribe after that, but it gave me a good jump start and got me really, really excited. So in no particular order here, but we planted celery, we planted zucchini, We planted eggplant and broccoli. We planted cabbage and kale, and I learned real quick that they don't like warm weather. So I pulled those up out of my garden pretty soon after I planted them, and you can see here why I did not like those peat pots. Those were supposed to break down, y'all, and you can see that they did not. Green beans, I was so excited to plant green beans. Definitely did not plant enough in our first year, so I learned a lesson there. Onions, those were fun. And tomatoes, gotta grow tomatoes when you live in the South, y'all. And I saw somewhere online that if you put a whole egg in the hole before you planted your tomato that you could prevent blossom end rot. And the funny thing is I did this but I ran out of eggs so not all the holes had an egg and I didn't label which ones I put the egg into and of course I forgot by the time that the plants came into full maturity so I can't tell you if this worked or if it didn't work. I just wasted a bunch of eggs, if nothing else, because we did end up getting blossom end rot, and I'll show you that. I planted our tomatoes in raised beds. A few plants I planted in containers, but one of the two is how we opted to do it, and I did use some stakes to tie them up. One mistake we definitely made was we did not take the time to prune our tomatoes. You want to learn the difference between an indeterminate and determinate variety. That really is going to determine how much of a yield you get from each of your plants. Sunflowers, oh my sunflowers. You definitely need some pollinators in your garden and these were my favorite. They got really tall. And at one point in the summer, I literally moved a chair out to my garden so that I could just sit in the middle of the beauty of the sunflowers and listen to the bees. It was my most favorite part of the garden. Marigolds that were actually crazy, super bushy, and very much like a fern sugar snap peas and i just used some leftover hardware cloth from making our fence to trellis these upward watermelon oh you gotta have watermelon in the south too 
Another great pollinator that I had was lemon mint. Sometimes this is called Monarda, but it was so beautiful with these purple blooms. We loved looking at that in the garden. Cucumbers. So I decided to utilize the fence to grow these cucumbers upward. And it actually was a genius idea, if I don't say so myself. Um, I was able to grow a lot of cucumbers in my garden and the vines weren't all over the ground because they trellised on the fence. And harvesting was pretty much a cinch and we got a lot of yield from our cucumber plants. We planted several different kinds of peppers had fun with some really hot peppers here. And we used a cage that the former owner had left on the property that he used in his garden that worked pretty good. Carrots, definitely didn't plant enough of those, lesson learned for the year following. And cantaloupe, I tried to do cantaloupe again vertically to utilize space in the garden, so my husband um, bent some of the hardware cloth we used for the fence into a cylinder and made a little um, tower for me to grow the cantaloupe upward on. And then we used old t-shirts to just make hammocks to cradle the fruit once it came in. And this worked really well. Had fun planting some purple sweet potatoes. I hadn't even heard of such a thing. I bought a few slips. I think I got four. Planted them and harvested right many. I was really excited to make a purple sweet potato pie for Thanksgiving and closed out the growing season with some collards. So I did everything from stuffing squash flowers with cheese and frying them in a pan to feeding things to my chickens. I made a lot of relish and pickles. I probably made pickles more than I made anything else. I gave a lot of those away as Christmas gifts. I actually harvested some of the sunflower seeds that we had from those beautiful sunflowers and roasted those. That was kind of a flop. Um, and let's see, I made some salsa and I canned a little bit of green beans but didn't really have enough to justify much of that. Many things that I don't have pictures for, but really just spent a lot of time having fun in the kitchen. And you know what? We had so much fun in our first year of gardening. We decided to double our space. So this time my husband got out the tractor. And you remember when I talked about the man that lived here before us? He came over and he showed my husband how to use that tractor to plow up this land. And we made a whole nother garden, so we doubled our space and then some. So stay tuned. I hope you'll come back to watch for more to see what we've had going on since. And happy gardening, y'all. <laughs>